The number 432, which my friend Robert Grant is now calling the Toth Constant, is a key to the Great Pyramid, its air shafts, and Giza, and much more. Okay, 432, what about it? Well, the radius of the sun is 432, thousand miles. In 12 hours, there are 432, hundred seconds. 43 squared is the speed of light in miles per second. E over 2 pi equals 0 0.432. The diameter of the moon is 260, 2160 miles, which is 432 times 5. The golden angle, 137.5 degrees divided by pi, equals 432. 10,000 over Gelfand's constant, which is e to the pi, sort of the root of Euler's identity formula, is 432. Robert Grant found that 1 over e to the pi is 0 0.0432. 3 Mayan Bakhtans is 432 thousand days. So, some incredible connections. Uh, da Vinci, when he drew the Vitruvian Man, probably the single you know leading drawing in the world next to the Mona Lisa, uh, has the Great Pyramid Angle, 51.843, and from the belly button to the circle in that famous drawing, it's 4.32 inches. Da Vinci chose that, I'm sure, on purpose. Okay, Robert Grant has shown that if you take the flower of life, this basic sacred geometric construction, and then if you put a circle around there and you take the diameter of that circle to be 1, okay, then the hypotenuse of any one of these intersections with the with the flower of life nodes there is going to come out to being related to 432. 1 plus 168 over 432. To use that one as an example, to just to pick another one here at random, you can see that one's going to be 65 for 30 seconds. So the hypotenuse will be 1 plus 65 for 30 seconds. Incredible. 432 is built into the essence of the universe. Take the Pythagoras Tetractus, so important in the you know Egyptian mystery schools and in, in the Greeks. So uh, sometimes it's pictured with these Hebrew letters. So Yahweh, the divine name, is there, but usually just the dots here. So the Tetractus is ten points arranged in four rows. Okay, so row one is a singleton point. It's the creator. Everything flows from there. Then row two defines a line, it sets direction and time, it go forwards and backwards. Then row three sets up a plane, so we're now we're into dimensionality, two, two dimensions. Okay, but then uh, row four would be redundant if it didn't add something, so it adds a point beyond the plane, and thus you have 3D space, the tetrahedron. Okay, so two, three, and four flow from the one. Okay, so the one's the creator, but the creation at these different levels, two, three, and four. That's the synecdoche of creation. So summarizing creation in reverse, they read four, three, two. Okay, so basically it's creator and created. Four, three, two is basically a cipher for, for creation itself. Unbelievable. Okay, so... Uh, the Giza Plateau is incredible, and so I think that Euler's identity formula is there. People have found all kinds of sacred geometric relations in these pyramids. I found this five times, the Great Pyramid on Giza, based from the center of Khufu to the center of Menkari. Uh, Chris Tedder, just for instance, take the center of the two big pyramids and then the center of the two little ones, and that blue rectangle is in Phi proportion to the red triangle. So, so many connections on Giza. And then, of course, there's the Orion correlation theory, which I've written a book about, this incredible correlation. And so, and then what about this? If you take the circle around the satellite pyramids of Menkara and uh, Khufu, and also the northeast corner of Khufu, that circle just happens to go right through the center of the Sphinx. This is a coordinated plan. Or take this incredible Fibonacci spiral that goes to the center of four of the Giza pyramids. It could not be by chance. And so if you take the quadrant formed by the Fibonacci uh, spiral, the uh, if you go right through east-west through the Sphinx and then go north-south through the Sphinx, that's a golden triangle. It's, it's the exact center of that rectangle and the crossbar is at five proportion. Okay, so again, 
the fact that it goes through the center of four pyramids, it's not by chance. So I've done several YouTube videos about the unified Giza plans. It's Stumpsy Geotologist, and it's different than the history of the world. Here's the history of the world. Caesar crossing the Rubicon in opposition to his government. Um, then you've got our, the Battle of Arbila. Alexander the Great conquers the Persian Empire. This is the way the world works. Hitler moving into the Sudentaland and, and taking territory. Okay, that's the history of the world. This is largely the history of the world, except at Giza. Okay, so Robert Grant and I have this association. We both discovered Alpha and Omegas in the Great Pyramid. You should study the book. Mine on the left, his on the right there, okay? And uh, this happened just a couple days ago. These, these providences happen all the time. I was making a video there, captured one frame of the uh, Pyramid of Chichen Itza. I was just there a couple of weeks ago, and I was talking about the number of the stairs. So Robert Grant posts post this. This is bizarre. Yesterday I saw a picture of this pyramid and immediately counted the large steps to the top of the platform nine, and I wondered about the smaller steps. Then you post this today. So the very day he was wondering about these steps, I'm posting a video about the number of them. So that's that kind of connection happens with this often. Okay, so he posted this on Instagram, and that it's this is just incredible. He, he names 432 the Toth constant, and notice what he says here. New discovery, all three Giza pyramids correspond directly to 432. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, so you've got Menkara, Khafre, and Khufu. All right, so the most basic data for any pyramid from which all else derives is the length of its base and its height. So here's the famous Cole Petri survey. All of these measures, the diagonals, the half base, all of them, the apothem, the edge, are all derived from the base and the height. So let's look at Menkara. Okay, so the base of Menkara, you've got three, four, five point six feet, which is 432 times eight. We go to the height of Menkara, it's 216 feet, 432 times two. Wow. Okay, so let's look at uh, Khafre. Let's put Menkara down there. So Khafre, the famous, you know, Pythagorean 345 pyramid, the Vesica Pisces there, three wide and two high. Okay, so the base of the pyramid of Khafre is 216 meters, again, 432 divided by two. And then the height of the Khafre pyramid is 144 meters, 432 divided by three. Unbelievable, okay? And then what about Khufu, the Great Pyramid? Okay, so, You've got a pi and a phi pyramid here. You know, you can see on the right the phi pyramid. If the ba half base is one, then the height is the root of phi and the hypotenuse is phi. Unbelievable. And if the half base is pi, then the height is four. And you've got the 711 ratio there of uh, base to height. And normally it's given as 440 Egyptian royal cubits for the base and 280 for the height. But if you give the base in the long cubits, it's 432. The base of the Great Pyramid is 432 long cubits. And if you take the height, unbelievable, it's 432 times that 711, 7 over 11. Unbelievable. And what's I, I just think is even more unbelievable, look at this. Look at this. Menkara, the 432, comes through feet. Khafre, that 432 that we saw, comes through the meter. And Khufu, that 432 we saw, comes through the cubit. Three different standards of measure. It's like the Trinity, three separate gods here, each with their own defining measure, and yet all working in harmony with each other. A trinity of harmony. Unbelievable. 432. Wow. Okay. And then, you know, Robert did a post right after that, showed the Pyramid of the Sun and Teotihuacan is the base is 432 cubits and the height is 432 divided by 2 in terms of feet. The Pyramid of the Moon, same thing. The height is 43.2 meters, and the base, the same as the Great Pyramid, 432, Great Pyramid's height, 432 times 7 to the 11th. Unbelievable, okay? So now what about the Queen's Chamber South Air Shaft, 432? What, what have we got here? Okay, so let's. here I am uh, in, I think it was 2014, in the uh, Queen's Chamber, and there's the Southern Air Shaft right there. Okay, so it's 8.4 inches square. That's right there in the Queen's Chamber. Okay, so uh, uh, Hawass put the uh, Yupawat robot in there in 1992. Okay, and uh, so that door was found at the end of that shaft that was done live on National Geographic. Okay, so I was actually there. Now, how could I be at the end of an eight inch square? You know, here's me in uh, 2018 with my special permission. That door is normally not, is locked on the left. That's, I was given the key to the Queen's Chamber. You can see me inside it there. That is not how I got there. This is how I got to the end of that shaft. The Council of Antiquities in Egypt 
made a life-size model of the Queen's Chamber South air shaft out in the desert. You can't go there now. It's restricted. You'll get in trouble. But I, I got there. Here's a picture of it. And so there's a picture of me showing that blocking stone on this life-size model of the Queen's Chamber South air shaft out in the desert in Giza. So you can see that that uh, cube right there corresponds to the to the door right there okay and then you can see the hole that's in the model is it was drilled you know into that that blocking stone okay right there but notice I've got the blocking stone right there because I traced it over that hole right there okay so let's think about these Queen's Jaber air shafts okay so you've got the southern air shaft points to the brightest star in the sky Sirius you've got the northern air shaft that points to the pole star at the time the pyramid was built okay and then you've got these squares at the end of the shaft two squares okay so light and two squares because you know the the uh, Sirius and the pole star we're looking for light we want to get this Pharaoh out we want to get him to the stars we want to get him to light you know so here's my thought light how about the speed of light squares how about two square roots okay so I should say it was my friend and colleague engineer Bob Criley who set these ideas into motion and he has the YouTube channel the Great Pyramid Revelation so thank you Bob okay so the square root of the square root of the speed of light is 131.58 so that's 65 Point seven eight plus sixty five point seven eight. Okay, which just happens to be the length of the two air shafts. Okay, it's incredible. So uh, if you take the horizontal coming out of the Queen's Chamber wall, it's six point six six feet, and then if you take that that uh, jog all the way up to the blocking stone, it's two hundred eight point six six feet, and then if you take the length of the blocking stone itself, it's uh, 0 0.2 feet. Okay, so when you add that up, you add those three measures up. You get a distance, a total distance for the shaft of 215.52 feet, which is 65.7 meters. Okay, so the length of the Queen's Chamber air shaft from the opening in the Queen's Chamber to the opening into that secret room. And it, so secret openings at both ends, it's 65.7 meters. This is unbelievable. Okay, so 65.7 meters. So that's essentially the double square root of the speed of light, 65.79, because there are slight variations given in the shaft length. So essentially, they're the same number, okay? So now if we go from the blocking stone to the inside of the casing stones, but outside the original uh, blocks that are there, or the uh, blocks that exist there now, it's 6.57 meters, okay? So 6.5... 65.7 meters the length of the Queen's Chamber air shaft as we've shown okay so it's to right there that's 65.7 meters and then uh, we showed you know that's the length there but the the two Queen Queen's Chamber air shafts are as we said 65.7 but if you divide that by 432 you get 6.57 which is the length from the blocking stone to the outside of the pyramid wow okay so look at that 65.7 the distance to the outside of the pyramid the square root of 43.2 is 6.57 wow incredible the square root of 4320 is 65.72 so again the six pi six uh, those two numbers of course we got from uh, uh, the square root of 43.2 and from the distance and then the same thing with the 65.7 we got it from a square root of uh, 4320 we also got it for an actual distance in the air shaft so if you multiply those it's 432 now Robert Grant pointed out to me that that's the fractal root 432 is the fract those are the fractal roots for 432 and he's written a paper with his colleague a mathematician uh, uh, and I'll put a link to his paper about fractal roots Grant argues with his colleague Talal Ganim in this paper the fractal root of numbers that this is a real class of numbers just like square roots so one common form of a fractal is there's a greater fractal root and a lesser fractal root, which is always one-tenth. And so we found that with 432. These distances, the air shaft, 65.7, and it one-tenth of it's 6.57, when multiplied, yield 432. And look at the other numbers that have greater fractal roots. Pi, Euler, golden section, number two, fine structure constant. Incredible. Very interesting. Okay, so 65. 0.7 is the length of the Queen's Chamber air shaft, 6.57 to the casing stones. We've seen that. 
432 divided by 65.7 is the length to the outside of the pyramid. Square root of 432 is 6.57, which is just a repeat of what I said. The square root of 4320 is 65.72. Unbelievable. 6.57 times 65.72. Is okay, those are the fractal roots of 432. Incredible, okay, incredible. So, I'm working on a video now about the alpha and omega I found inside a closed part of the Great Pyramid. So, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.